cannot come. So the servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to the servant, Go up quickly into the streets, the lanes, the cities. Bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Many are called, but few are chosen. There is a remnant, as I said, of people within a people that are going to follow the Lamb wheresoever He goes. And they're not going to have no guile in their mouth. They're going to have truth before them. Amen. They're not going to believe what, what people tell them, but they're going to take the gospel truth. Yes. And they're going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them into that truth. Lord. And when I studied this out in, chapter, in verse 24, I looked up, the, the Holy Spirit led me to look up the word shall taste and the word suffer. Shall taste means to experience. The word suffer is one of the meanings cost. In other words, he says, for they who that, are, that were called will not experience the cost. And that's, I thought, wow, Lord. And then I went back up to verse 16, and it, where the man, where he said, a certain man made a great supper. He, it, it's like what came to me, it presented a great cost. A, it was a banquet, a great cost. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, can that be confirmed? You know, so I read on, it says, and there went great multitudes with him. And turned and he said to them, verse 26, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife mm -hmm. and children and brethren and sisters, yea, his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. Right. Do you want to be a disciple of the Lord? Then that's what, those are the words of Jesus. You have to hate your own life. And hate's a pretty strong yes. word. And it's not in, in, in regards to just loving, not loving who you are, but hating the things of this life, hating yes. who you are, what it represents, and how we can enjoy life here on this earth. Then you can be a disciple. Even family, we have to be able to, mm -hmm. to, to um, if there's going to be conflict in family, you have to love God more than that. That's you have to love right. truth more than that. Amen. Okay, and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Again, this is Jesus speaking. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sits not down first and counts the cost? Yes. Whether he hath sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. And I believe that there has been a foundation laid in Christianity, yes. but the building is yet to come. The building is the glory of God. The building is yeah. the fruit that he says as he mm -hmm. gathers those impotent people that there's going to be um, uh, increase in their lives and fruit mm -hmm. in their lives. And otherwise, they sit back, the, the world sits back and mocks us. I mean, that's the yes. truth. How, mm -hmm. We know that to be true. Yes. You know, They're saying, this is Zion. It says that in Jeremiah sometimes. This is Zion, the holy city of God. Well, we haven't lived up to what? what gospel Jesus has, yes, has right. preached to us. And it's high time we do. It's yes. high time we take Amen. the truth Amen. and do exactly what yes. he says for us to do. Glory to God. Because our, our life is, is really not here. We live mm -hmm. here with the kingdom in us, yes. and we walk out the kingdom. We have one agenda, and, that agenda, mm -hmm. and that's to do his will. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. really... Okay, uh, <laughs> this was another... Okay, uh, David's son. Not David's son. Uh, Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son. Anybody pronounce his name for me? Bethel. I know which one you mean. That was a big one. M E P H I B O S. With a lame leg. He, both his feet were lame. Oh, yeah. And here's the, here's the heart of David. David wanted to see if he could show any kindness to the house of Saul, mm -hmm. which Saul represents the religious system. And David, who is a type and shadow of Christ, he's sim yeah. symbolic of having a heart of Christ. He wanted to do good all the days of his life. He wanted to seek God and, and always have a, a hungry and thirsty heart. So anyways, he he goes and he sends out servants and he finds Jonathan's son. And he's, and of course, Jonathan's son comes very humbly before him and says, I'm nothing but scum of the earth. And he says, no, you will sit at my table mm -hmm. all the days of your life. Hallelujah. And he was lame. And the table mm -hmm. is spread. God has spread the table. Table speaks of union and communion and fellowship and intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. And as he said in Revelation 3, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock to the Laodicean church. Mm -hmm. I'm knocking and I'm saying, can I come in and sup yes. with you? 
He wants to dine with us. He wants to have that intimacy with us. And that's what he, uh, he allowed uh, the lame feet of that young man that I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I knew I had heard it. But... Thank you. Okay. It's getting along here. Now the other, the other um, part of that great multitude in John 5 are the withered. And the withered means shrunk, wasted of a land in distinction from water. Scorched, dry land. This is a people living in the wilderness. And we spoke on that last Friday at, the, at our Friday night group. And David knew what it was to be living in a wilderness. He wrote Psalm 63, well, Psalm 63 while he dwelt in the, in the wilderness of uh, Judah. And he wrote, um, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh long for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so have I I have seen thee in the sanctuary. And there are rivers in the wilderness, hallelujah. Psalm 107 talks about that. Water springs in the dry ground. And that's for the people who are withered. That's for the people that who are dwelling in the wilderness. And that doesn't mean that there, there are people that are depressed, or some may be, and because you don't dwell in the wilderness all the time. But there are people, I feel at times I'm in the wilderness because I'm always mm. wanting a drink. I'm saying, God, I'm thirsty. I'm never satisfied. Fill me up, Lord. And that's not a bad thing. Amen? Mm. Okay, so then um, we talked on the driven out ones. And this remnant that God is gathering, it's, it speaks of a residue of people. It's a people that didn't fit in. Because not everybody is like that. And, and I believe that if you feel at any part in your life you can identify with this great multitude of people, then, then this is your hour. This is your hour for power, let me tell you. It means, the word uh, remnant means to leave. It means, what did they leave? Well, they left the religious system. They left... Believing in lies, they left, and I'm not saying don't go to church, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about a people that, that don't fit in, a people that take a stand for what yes. truth is. Amen. Okay? Because you will be disliked. You will That's not right. be accepted when you follow what Jesus said in Matthew 24. Exactly. This gospel will be preached in all, right. in all the earth. This gospel does not identify with what I'm hearing a lot about there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's all bad, don't get me wrong, but... Jesus warned us we'd have false teachers, false prophets. Okay. Yeah. So it was interesting. I, I thought about a remnant of fabric. When you go to a fabric store, a remnant is a piece of fabric that's left on a bolt. And that means unsold or unused. And God is about to use you. He's about to use those that are impotent. Those that are... Um, those that have uh, a, a limp, those that have are withered in the wilderness. And it means unsold. And I thought they're not sold to man's ways or man's doctrines, but they're sold to the gospel yes. because they preserve themselves for the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah 11, 11 says he will recover that remnant. Joel 2.32 says that there is deliverance for that remnant. Mm -hmm. And Ze Zephaniah... Um, Okay, we already read that said they would speak no lies. And there would be no vile in their mouth. And it says in Zephaniah 8.12 that their seed will be prosperous. Hallelujah. The vine shall give her fruit and the ground shall give her increase and the heavens shall give their due. There will be rain upon your ground. Hallelujah. Where you've been dry, where you have felt um, forsaken, where you have felt like you've been driven out. Okay. Hallelujah. So... Um, now the whole the whole part of this message, this is where the Lord I'm coming to a close here. Sorry, I was long, but I had to get it all out. But okay. John John five four. Let's go back to John five.